What I wanted to know was if um, you've conscious a couple of candidates haven't really spoken. Uh, very briefly, could each candidate outline their personal qualities and achievements which make me think they'll be success as an escort councillor? Okay, Richard. Well, we did. I just had a request, which I think makes a lot of sense actually. We can swap around a little bit more on, on running. So um, you can kick me under the table. Um, so can we invite one of the Liberals? Well, yeah. in fact, all. I mean, do you want? Yeah, to all okay. Okay. So can you can you keep this down to a couple of minutes? Yeah, yeah, um, brief. Absolutely. And do, are you happy if we do all Libs, then do all Labour, and then yeah, okay. mm -hmm. give Bill a chance to get his party together? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, can we sort of share this between me and Stan, really? I think it's about hard work more than anything else. Um, we spoke earlier about how anyone can do a good job within the ward. I think that's true to an extent, but it's really about how much time and how much effort you're willing to put into to making this a better place to live. Um, I, think, I think it's fair to say, really, the focus team put a massive amount of effort into talking to people, knocking on people's doors, getting the issues that really matter to people, working on them, reporting back. Um, there's no kind of magic bullet for what your candidate is or what your candidate should do. It's just about uh, commitment, it's about passion for the area and, and the ability to just grasp hold of issues, be tenacious, work on them until they get solved and until they get sorted. I think the other question was individual. So, OK, that may be a quality you feel Stan's got, but Stan... You know, this was meant to be an individual response. Oh, right, yes. Yeah. I was talking about myself, respect, respect, yeah. not, not being too... Uh, what have you achieved as councillor? Right. Um, again, it's, it's very difficult to, to talk about individual achievement because we do just really, really work as a team. Um, if we talk about things that I've been doing lately, um, I've been working very, very strongly on the HMO uh, referendum neighbourhood plan. That's something I've been very personally working on in recent times. It's, it's something where uh, neighbourhood plans aren't really designed place like Escot um, is really written with us in mind when, when critical neighbourhood plans taking 18 months to implement we're mainly talking about rural wards, wards with a lot of new housing that's coming, that kind of thing. Really in Escot there isn't a great deal, there is some things you can put in a neighbourhood plan, there isn't really a great deal you can put in a neighbourhood plan. And so, so really what, uh, what the government had in mind when they wrote the localism act for these things was not places like Escot. So I looked at neighbourhood plans first were announced and thought well how can this benefit Actually, it can't. You know, there is possibly do, but really, it's, it's not written for us. So I thought, well, if the scope of it was extended, what could benefit if the plans were to change slightly? So, what I did was about the HMO issue. Um, there are too many split houses here. It causes problems with parking, with waste, that kind of thing. But it looked as if that wasn't going to be covered by neighbourhood plans. It just just wouldn't come into the equation at all. But that was what we needed as escort ward. So, frankly, I was just using the, the tenacious quality that we've talked about and badgering the government ministers day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, until finally they said, yes, you can do this. And they wrote it into the regulations. I, I won't say they wrote it into the regulations purely for Escort's benefit, but I was the person who was really hammering on them over in Whitehall, day in, day out, to say, this is what we need for our ward in the centre of Swindon, um, and that's just an example of one thing I've been working on over the last few uh, weeks and months. I can give you a lot more examples. But... Is that more what you had in mind? Yeah, you... largely. So, so, just short, 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 so uh, Stan. Pretty... Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, there, there's the connection actually between us both and the focus team. I mean, uh, I suppose you guys can ask me personally is, is why I do it, I suppose, is, is probably a good question. Is, and I suppose it would have to be that I actually do enjoy it. I mean, I actually do enjoy the idea of being a counsellor. I mean, it, funny, I think you're a counsellor. I mean, I mean, Shakespeare says you have many roles in life, or some, some like some, an allusion to that. I, I, you all have many roles. I have a job role, but my job role has never been anything great. But I felt my role as a counsellor potentially can be useful. The idea of actually helping people out, doing things like that, getting involved in local government, it's, it's decision making, making an idea. And I've been involved in other things to do with communities, whether it's community councils or charities, because I felt that was actually a contribution you could make in your life really, but as a counsellor I think it's actually the little things. Um, I'll give an example today, somebody sent me an email today actually about the council actually knocking down their wall by accident when they was moving a wet mattress, you know, and the council won't give them money for actually knocking down the wall. Well, that is a time to bring in the councillor. Say, well, what are you doing? Everybody knocked down the wall down actually moving this mattress. So it's those things, actually you are that, the go-getter to try and push the council to do things. 
that's important. The other thing is actually getting your hands dirty as well. It's not really about being a councillor and talking actually great things, but actually we've been involved in actually re removing dump rubbish around people's back alleys. Again, getting your hands dirty and doing something. So it's actually doing, doing the business, not actually just talking about it and you know, all these nice, nice ideas about party policies, but actually doing something and making it happen. So I think that is a role of a council, to represent the people and get things done. And whether you have to go and do it yourself is just an element of that. But if you want to do anything, you have to enjoy it, otherwise you would be subject to all the criticism you normally get as politics. Because uh, whenever I go to work, I get blamed for every council thing that has been going, you know. For, and, um, and then you play a different thing, you're the devil's advocate there, and therefore you have to say, well, yeah, it's what council did X, Y, and Z. So, I mean, as uh, Mrs. Boyd at the back there, you know how I sometimes have to explain the council policies to her, why it happened. Um, you do sometimes have to do that role as well. So you are, you are the uh, go-between, I think, sometimes between council and actually people. It's all an element of that. But I, I do find it enjoyable, and I have done since I was ever first elected. Thanks very much, Stan. So if we go, go now to the Labour Party. Okay, so I'm going first. So um, Emma Bushell. Um, my background has been as a campaign and activist with local groups in Swindon on human rights, anti-poverty, development and campaigning. Um, I've always believed in the power of the political system to achieve, and I guess I see my role as influencing that from the outside. And now I'm even to taking part in the system and trying to get things going and working within the system. Um, I work in education, one of the colleges within the town. Um, I've recently become a governor of a former primary school in the town. So I do see education as an area where I'm acquiring a bit of expertise and that's the role I'd like to play within the council. Um, I'm also a trade union rep in my workplace. Trade union reps aren't always the most popular people in the world, but that's what I do, I think it's important. Um, I think that's given me a lot more experience in, in case work, just dealing with individuals, individual issues, um, conflicts of interest which aren't always easy to resolve. And it's about um, for me taking the go negotiation and influencing skills I've used as an activist um, in a bit more kind of um, up close and personal scenario, dealing with management. Um, and actually, as a trade union rep, it's experience got from Stan's talking about, and sometimes you don't feel that you can please everybody. Um, so, also, I'm a member of Unison, a public sector organisation, and Unison prides itself in campaigning public services. So again, that's um, made me very aware of threats to public service within the town. And again, that's one of the reasons why I'm now sitting on this side of the table rather than on that side of the table. Um, I want to get involved, I want to play my part, I want to make sure that um, we maintain public service within this window and we protect the vulnerable. Thank you very much, Emma. We are trying to keep two minutes at this stage, and everyone's under, so this is fantastic. Um, Chris? Uh, well, I've been in Swindon 43 years. Um, I've basically uh, invested a lot in the area. Um, I'm a uh, father of three. Uh, we live at the, uh, the other side of Escot, so I mean, as far as I'm concerned, having an Escot that's uh, worth living in is a good place, good environment to bring up the kids is extremely important. Um, I'm actually quite new into politics. I, I really came into this on a, a single issue, which was uh, I, I'm an IT consultant. I've worked in a small business, a corporate environment, and I've run my own business for uh, the last 10, 11 years. But when I saw the uh, the white card being announced back in December 2009. Uh, from an IT of view, I thought that the council was wasting their money, and I actually went along. I wasn't politically tied at that, at that point at all. I went along and uh, raised 17 points at a committee meeting to try and suggest that this probably wasn't the best way of spending council money, and we were going to lose the lot. Um, and uh, what really sparked me into this was Rob Blue turned around to me and accused me of not writing the questions. Uh, which I found very bizarre, and that's what made me realise there's something not right here. I started looking further. And that's what really got me involved in politics when I found all the things that were going on with this and in other ways that the council was spending money. Um, I think as far as uh, what I'm quite proud of this year is, um, or the last year, uh, it was, it's not so much clearing up the rubbish at the back of Dixon Street. I mean, we can all go down there, we can all get litter pickers and have both opportunities and, and that's great. But it was, it was more a case of actually making it uh, a sustainable action. Because unless you can actually clear up an area and actually get the residents to take responsibility for that area and keep it clear, I'm sure as councillors or as anybody, we don't want to be going down in six months' time and having to clear it up for the same, for the same reason. We're quite proud 
uh, the, the action we took in Dixon Street, uh, the residents now go back to that area themselves. If anybody drops any bags or fly tips, they're straight into it, finding if there's any letters or anything that can identify who's done it, and knocking on the door, and that, that area's been kept clean. And I was quite, ha quite glad that I was invited over to uh, the back garden to actually explain how, how it was done and how we worked with uh, SCS because it was private land and they wouldn't go into it, but by working with us, yes, we could get this cleared up at no cost Chris, to the residents. Before this becomes an advert for back garden, can we move yeah. on to Andy, because you're every two minutes. Oh, all right, well, I think it's me. I should say one more thing, which I'm really quite okay, proud of. Okay, very good. Uh, the other thing I'm quite proud of is we had a single man in Clifton Street who was uh, fell foul of council tax through no fault of her own. Uh, the council deemed it necessary to give her a court order uh, we got involved. We not only did we get the council to take back that court order, but we actually got them to change the system that the that residents wouldn't get caught in the same trap through no fault of their own. And it's actually changing the system and making something sustainable, not just doing a quick fix and then moving on to the next. So thank you very much, Chair. Andy. Yeah, um, I'm a great believer in the political system in that there's two parts of it. First of all, there's getting people elected, and there's what happens, but there's also the power of ordinary people to change things. And I think the art of politics is changing what's possible. So you can't accept when the Parliament or the Council tell you what's possible. You also need to sometimes stretch the envelope through people being involved. I mean, the first thing I was involved in in Swindon was there was a woman who's 64 years old, Hunter Begum, who lived down in County Road, who was being deported to Pakistan, despite the fact that um, she was disabled and had no means of support. And her, her family here wanted to support her. Um, they were claiming no money for her whatsoever from the state. They were even saying they'll, they'll send her private for the health soap. But the, the Gov Tory government, as it was then, wanted to deport her to basically where she would have died in poverty in Pakistan. Now, we, the Home Office said that they were absolutely not going to budge on this. And we launched a campaign in Swindon, which went on for two years, where effectively we, we, we had her in hiding at one stage, and we won. In 1997, the council, uh, the government changed their mind and allowed her to stay. And then 10 years later, <coughs> Harbour, who was a woman with learning difficulties, who'd been adopted in this country um, from the Ukraine by a Christian family, and they hadn't paid £200 during the adoption process. And because they hadn't paid that £200, the government were going to throw this woman out of the country, or else she had leading learning difficulty sent to Ukraine, where she'd been here since she was 13. Um, and again, we fought that. We had a ca public campaign, and we overturned the Home Office's decision. So I'm a great believer that ordinary people can get involved and that they can win things. So I was also involved in, you know, along with Bill, who was a fantastic campaigner against the, the, the Iraq War, involved in leading the campaign in Sweden against the Iraq War. We had a whole number of very um, prominent protests which managed to, to get the opinions of those people in Swindon um, <coughs> who were opposed to the war to be democratically expressed and to hold um, our um, MPs to account, out of which came my perhaps most unusual um, achievement, which was to be interviewed by Stars and Stripes, which is the official house newspaper of the United States Army, um, because this was about our campaign against Aria Fairford being used to bomb Iraq. So, I'm a great believer in using the political process both inside and outside and mobilising ordinary people to express themselves and I think we can achieve a tremendous amount by doing that. Um, I'm still occasionally, you know, the video. Okay, good. Right, I'll, I'll make one final thing and I've also written for The Guardian, Western Air Press, <laughs> Indian Post, uh, Public Speaker, Organised History Schools in Bradford and Avon. Um, all round wouldn't be a bad counsellor. <laughs> Get your papers from in love. Yeah. Yeah. Bill. Uh, well, to answer the question, you asked about personal qualities, and I suppose one of the personal qualities would be persistence and stubbornness. I mean, I've always been a campaigner, whether it's a first of all against the Vietnam War originally, and CND, and then perhaps one of the more environmental things. Um, for example, the, the Save Coat campaign. With the front garden and the fosto fiasco and more mm. recently the croft school and mm. so and I've always been somebody that my family writes the letters and writes to MPs, writes to councils and so on. And I've always been an agitator if you like. So um, I hope I would have the personal qualities to represent my constituents in this ward, whatever their problem, 
you know, how I've had a bit of experience with the public system works and so on. So hopefully I have the energy and interest in trying to promote your your um, issues and uh, make the place a much greener and pleasant land.